exhausting experience. But I think it's good for the human soul to live a life that's outside of their own primary desires. And children really force you to do that. So I think it's good for everybody to have an experience in life where they're in a service to others. And there's no better service than children. Unless the outliers really get that, they really sit with it, of course, and have that clarity. Of... Or they have an alternative way of serving others. Yeah, sure. maybe they have a career similar to ours, or they've adopt or they invest. But just purely hedonistic is dangerous. But I think if your alternative, your plan B, say if you can't have children, is to volunteer or dedicate to others or heal or help, that can fill that void. But I do think it's a human need to give to others and dedicate to others. What do you think about the pressure of the biological clock for women? Because I definitely see it's in point of contention that is really, I have so much compassion for it. Matthew Hussey, we were just talking about, he, he gave that example of like the same pressure was put on as a man. You have to achieve all your dreams and become a millionaire by like 35 or 40 or whatever it is. Why it's off the table forever. You know, what that would do to the psychology of a man. It's obviously not the same, but it points in this direction of this pressure that this window, we might desire that. It's horrifying. Yeah. It's really horrifying because there's a time pressure and then some women will drop their standards in what they want in a partner simply to have the baby, which is, I'm not judging that. I think that's totally fine. If that's what you want to do, if you want children, no worries. It might enhance the chances of a broken home, but sometimes the baby's worth the stress of that. So I understand. At the same time, I think women, what happens then when they they, here's how you cope with it a bit better. My, my recommendation always to women is sometimes they'll get to 40 and 41 and 42 and they will still be like, no, no, I want to have kids. And they like cried with that mentality. I think the better thing to do is as you get into your late 30s, be totally and utterly aligned with a plan B. Plan B, let's say, for example, you're not having children, it's not happening and you haven't found the one or whatever it is. You find an alternative way to live your life that would still be somewhat fulfilling. If you don't have that and you haven't found your partner, you will slip into a slow depression. It does do that to you. But if you have a plan B, that plan B might be, OK, I decide to adopt or I'm going to date somebody that already has children. Children, or I'm a bit flexible with what I want to do with the rest of my life and you'll be okay but if you have no plan B and it's just stuck on having children you will suffer sometimes I'll meet women who are in their mid 40s and they're like oh no no I'm still trying I've got IVF and, that. and they're putting their body through so much whereas if they just let go and thought I'll grieve that idea I once had and now look for a plan B where I can still fulfill my potential I think it's better for their mental health than just forcing something that's not happening there's obviously the pressure of the time, but then also if women have like really high standard of who they want to be with, I could see how it's settling would lead yeah. to a broken home or a potential divorce mm -hmm. or things that you might not be totally stoked on in the future. Well, here's the thing. It, if you value having children more than having a relationship, just pick somebody who would be a fantastic co-parent. If worst case scenario happened, they would be a fantastic co-parent. If you're focusing on the partner and he might be a businessman, but you see that he's always away, he's never home with the kids, he's not got that kind of, he's not stable, but he's just high value and you're having a child with him, you're going to struggle a bit. So change that to if you're in that position where you're having to decide between children and a partner, choose what you, a per, somebody that you could perfectly, not perfectly, but you could effectively co-parent with if that's your end goal. But if your end goal is a partner, you can focus on the partner side of things but if your end goal in life is I'd rather be have a mother than I would be a wife I, I, if I had to pick one then focus on their ability to co-parent some women what they'll do is they'll focus entirely on how good a guy is to him but he might have children that he neglects so she might have children that she doesn't really pay much attention to but if they are already a parent pay attention to how they treat their children how much of a priority their children are if they deprioritize their children do not go in you can have children with them but have low expectations of what those children mean to them in their life. Do you think that the energy of seeking a partner and like trying to, I guess, fulfill that need externally, do you think the act of that energetically brings it in closer or pushes it away? I don't know curious about this. I'd love to hear your take on it. In my personal experience, I always found that it pull, pushes it away. But I do know women who are like, I want to get married and have a baby. And they would go on 100 dates on Tinder and make it their mission. And sometimes it would work. So I'm curious, what do you think about that? Maybe you're a bit more than me, because I've, I always saw some women would treat it like a job. And they'll say, I'm going to go on 50 dates. I'm going to make sure I find my husband. Every guy I get with, I'm going to ask him, what's the plan? If it's not there, bye. And they almost treat it like work. And I I've seen it pay off, but I also, for me personally, I found that very draining and it kind of ruined the authenticity of connections because you're viewing it through the lens of like an interview. So I'm always curious which works better. What do you think works better? 
I, again, I just really don't think it can be a one size fits all because there's just such a big spectrum. And I could see how just ha having a sheer numbers game approach of the more people you meet, the more likely you're, you're going to find somebody who's in, in alignment with you. That also being said, I believe there is this vibrational or energetic component as well when you kind of find that sense of home and non neediness within yourself, which I understand can be so difficult. And so I can't even hot. put myself in a woman with, for example, the biological clock issue it takes inner work to find that kind of self satiation in, in a way. But to me, that as a man is more attractive yeah. when a woman's really in, in, in her body and is regulated and is at home within herself. That to me screams maternal energy. That to me screams somebody that I could be settled down with. But do you think a woman that creates a relationship and pushes a man towards a relationship is like, do you think she's more likely to get a relationship than the one that's just take it easy, see how it goes or whatever it I is? I think she probably is more likely to get yeah, the relationship, but I it might so. not be in alignment with, yeah. I guess, the longevity of somebody who's aligned. Because I saw someone, it was a Dr. Orion, he said that when men want sex, what they'll do is they'll push for it. So they'll have dates which might involve alcohol, they'll have you close to their home, they'll curate the environment that pushes you towards sex. Similarly, if you want a long-term relationship, you have to curate the environment. So that might mean like phone calls, asking for a label, asking, yes, it might push away some guys, but it might just get you your you might filter out the wrong guys so it might it, might, it may work it just depends what you have the energy for some people just don't have the energy for it